Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to the witnesses. Uh, Secretary Panetta, again, I want to thank you for visiting the uh, Groton shipyard back in November. You had a chance to climb on board the Mississippi and the North Dakota, which is under construction, as well as really a pretty extraordinary town hall with the workers on the, on the pier there, where you very eloquently described the value of the industrial base uh, to our national security. In light of that, I, just to follow up on Mr. Langevin's questions, um, the um, Mississippi, which was christened just a few weeks later, uh, had come in $64 million under budget 12 months ahead of schedule. And there's no question that the momentum of two subs a year, which took 20 years to get us up to that pace, is achieving savings. That Block 4 contract shift, which, by the way, that's the third time it's been changed, not the second time, Mr. Hale, there is no question that in terms of, of materials management, in terms of workforce management, uh, in terms of layoffs, which is inevitably going to flow from that um, shift, uh, is going to result in costs. And I, I guess the question is, um, you know, did you include that in your fit up in terms of the cost of, of that dip in, in production, which, uh, again, we, we're seeing real results now in terms of savings because of the higher production rate? So far as I know, the fit up is fully funded. I hear your point. We had to take $487 billion out of the budget, and we tried to do it in a way consistent with our strategy, but we had to do it. And, uh, and this was one of the issues raised with the Navy, discussed with them, and uh, they would have preferred not to do it, so would we, uh, but it's where it is. It is a fiscal 14 decision. We'll get another chance to look at it in light of uh, current uh, fiscal well, realities. The, the strategy, of course, which was articulated at the outset today, clearly focuses on Asia Pacific, and, and you can't have an effective strategy without a, a strong undersea fleet. Thank you for saying that you are willing to continue to work on this, because, uh, again, I, look at the long-term effect in terms of the fleet size will be decades. No, no, it, it, uh, this, uh, you know, I was very impressed with what I saw in Groton. Uh, I don't want to lose those skills. I don't want to lose those abilities. I want to maintain that kind of industrial base. So uh, we will we'll continue to do whatever we can to work with you to see what we can do to try to reduce those costs in the future. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Um, I also want to go back to Mr. Thornberry's point about the uh, 2005 BRAC, which, um, again, I respect the fact that you have deep, profound personal experience in terms of what you went through um, in your time in Congress. Um, but some of us have our own experience as well. I served on the Readiness Subcommittee for the last five years. We've been following the 2005 BRAC like a box score in terms of um, its, its results. Uh, it cost about twice as much as was predicted, and as, as Mr. Thornberry said, the net savings is still years away. And, um, you know, obviously we all get sort of uh, pinned as being sort of looking at our own backyard when this issue gets discussed, but I think there is a legitimate question here, particularly with the fact that we've got to deal with the Budget Control Act caps. You know, how do you do this in, in terms of not costing money in the short term? I mean, you're, the, the, resu the answers we've gotten so far from Dr. Carter and yourself is that it's zero in terms of projected savings uh, for, for the, the plan that was submitted there. So, you know, zero minus zero equals zero. I mean, if we don't do it, I mean, it just doesn't, it, it, it's, a, it's a nullity in terms of trying to uh, achieve the Budget Control Act targets. And, um, and frankly, I think that's a very big threshold question which the Department has to answer before I think there's going to be any willingness to look at this thing at all. You know, uh, I mean, I, I hear what you're saying, and, and I, 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 the 2005 uh, costs uh, are, are frankly, you know, it's just, just unacceptable the way that, that process ultimately worked out in terms of how, how much it cost us. On the, other, on the other hand, obviously, in the long run, it, it will produce some savings. I guess. What I, would, what I would suggest to you is that, you know, we've, we've been through three BRAC rounds. There, there are some lessons to be learned here. If we're going to do another BRAC round, as we've recommended, perhaps we need to do it in a way that tries to acknowledge some of the lessons learned here to make sure that we achieve the savings that we have to achieve as part of the BRAC process. Maybe that's a better way to, to approach this issue. Well, it, it's our, my understanding that we're going to see language sometime in March in terms of the proposal. And um, again, there's going to be a high degree of skepticism for those of us who, who again, have been tracking the overall uh, results of the last round. And, and um, certainly I know you've gotten mixed comments here today, but uh, I just want to at least share, certainly for some of us, uh, this, this is a real problem. I yield back.